in this lesson, we want to start talking about the properties of matrices. And specifically here, we want to do an introduction to matrices. All right, so over the course of the last few lessons, we learned how to solve linear systems with matrix methods. Specifically, we looked at the Gaussian elimination and the Gauss-Jordan elimination methods. So at this point, you had some exposure to matrices, but over the course of the next few lessons, what we want to do is just expand our limited knowledge and build a foundation for some other methods that can be used to solve linear systems. So when we talk about a matrix in math, normally we're speaking about an ordered array of numbers, or you might say a rectangular array of numbers. Now, when we talk about what's inside of a matrix, these numbers here, so for example, in this guy right here, you see if I read across, I have one, negative seven, five, and 13. And then here I have three, negative nine, two, and negative four. And then here I have six, negative two, one, and five. So all of these numbers inside of these brackets represent the elements or the entries of the matrix. Okay, so you might hear those two words interchangeably. Now, when we talk about a matrix, it's important to know when we're referring to a row or we're referring to a column. So you see you have an image of a guy rowing a boat, and that's meant to represent a row. Okay, so a row goes across. So you see you have a row here, a row here, and a row here. So this matrix has three rows. And you'll remember this from, again, our lesson on Gaussian elimination and Gauss-Jordan elimination, where we kind of labeled these rows. We said this was row one, this was row two, and this was row three. And I made that a B, I don't know why. So this was row three. Okay, so three rows, and then you see the image or the picture for a column, okay? Columns are vertical. So this is going up and down. So this is vertical, this is vertical, this is vertical, this is vertical. So this is a column one, this is a column two, this is a column three, and this is my column four, okay? So this guy has three rows and it has four columns. So when we look at that information, we can say it's a three by four matrix, okay? This is known as the order or the dimensions of the matrix. So I'm just gonna write here that this is a three by four matrix. Again, that's called the order or the dimensions of the matrix. Now, in this example, what would the order be? Well, again, if I go through, I can say I have a row here. I can say I have a row here, a row here, a row here. And finally, let me make that better, a row here. So you have five rows, right? One, two, three, four, five. Again, the rows are going across. Just picture the guy rowing the boat, okay? That's how you remember. The columns are going up and down, okay? So we're gonna say that we have one column here, we have a column here, a column here, and a column here. So you have five rows and four columns. The rows always come first, okay? The rows always come first. So it's a five by four, okay? When we're talking about the order, or again, the dimensions of the matrix. What about this guy? So here we have what? We have a row here, so this is row one. We have another row here. Again, the rows go across. Then the columns are up and down. So this is a column here, this is a column here, this is a column here. So this guy, if I talk about the order, it's a two by three, right? Two rows, three columns. So it's a two by three. All right, so in a lot of cases, we're gonna use capital letters to name matrices. And this has a lot of different uses. Mostly if you're going to kind of reuse a matrix over and over again, you might be performing several operations with it. So let's say you write capital letter A is equal to, and again, you have these elements, you have four and two in the first row and negative three and negative one in the second row. Well, I might have to do several things with A, so it's just useful to name it. That way I can keep talking about it without relisting the elements each time, okay? Now, another thing you might wanna know is that if a matrix has the same number of rows as it has columns, like we have here, it's referred to as a square matrix, right? So this guy has two rows and it has two columns, okay? So this is a two by two, otherwise known as a square matrix, okay? So if it's a three by three, a four by four, a 117 by 117, again, same number of rows as columns, it's a square matrix. So again, we have another example of a square matrix. So this is matrix B. And again, we have three rows. So one, two, and three. Again, they're going across and you have three columns, okay? Again, the columns are going up and down. This is a three by three matrix, or again, it's a square matrix.
All right, so you also have a row matrix and a column matrix. So a row matrix is a matrix with only one row, and then a column matrix is a matrix with only one column. So this D here is an example of a row matrix. You only have one row here, okay? You've got several columns, so column one, column two, column three. So the order here is a one by three. And again, this is a row matrix because it only has a single row. Now, E is gonna be an example of a column matrix because it only has one column, okay? But it also has four rows, so it has a row one. Let me make that a capital letter. So a row one, a row two, a row three, and a row four. So this guy is a four by one, if we're thinking about the order. And again, it's a column matrix because there's just one single column. All right, let's talk a little bit more about notation. This is something you definitely need to know as we go deeper into this topic. So generically speaking, you'll probably see this in your book. You have this capital letter A and it's equal to, inside of the brackets, you have all these lowercase a's and you have this subscript associated with each kind of entry or lowercase a. So each guy here, let's say I start with this one right here. So this is a sub one one, okay? So the lowercase a is just a matter of having a capital A here. Okay, if I had a capital letter B, this would be a lowercase b. If I had a capital letter C, lowercase c, so on and so forth. The one one there is meant to say where I am in the matrix. Okay, it's like a location. So the first number, okay, the one here, the first one, tells me what row I'm in. And the second one tells me which column I'm in. Well, in this one, at the top, I'm in the first row and the first column. If I move one to the right, now I have a sub one, two. So this guy right here is in the first row, second column. Move to the right, I have A sub one, three. Again, I'm staying in the same row, so I'm still having a row position of one, but my column is just increasing as I move to the right. So here it was one, here it was two, now it's three. Okay, but the row always stayed the same. And I'm gonna continue out till I get to A sub one N. So I'm still in the first row, but I'm in the nth column, okay? So then this notation as we go down, you see that in this case, all the way to the left, the column stays the same. It's always a one, right? Because I'm in the first column, but the row is now increasing as I move down. So we end up down here with the A sub M1. And if we go all the way here to the bottom right, I have A sub MN. So this tells me that what? For this matrix, it's an M by N, right? It's got M rows and it's got N columns. So generally speaking, that's what you're going to see. But you need to know how to find specific entries. They might ask you, hey, what's the value of something like A sub three, three, okay? So what that means is to go and find this entry in the third row in the third column. So I would say, okay, this is the third row, third column. So that's this guy right here, okay? Whatever that happens to be. In this case, it's generic, but in a normal matrix, you'd have some kind of number or symbol, or you'd have something there that you could say this is equal to this. So generically in your textbook, what they're gonna write is they're gonna say A sub I, J. And again, all this means is that it's the element that's gonna be in the ith row, or you could say row I, and the column J, right? Or the Jth column, if you wanna say it that way. It's always row first and column second. Now, one thing I wanna call your attention to because this does cause some confusion. If you see it with commas, it's really the same thing. So I could say that A sub three, two, this is really the same as if I said A sub three and then put a comma there for the two. So some people get confused by that. It's just a difference in notation. If you have numbers involved that have two digits, you need to use a comma so that you understand what it is, okay? Let's say I had A sub three and then 12. Well, you don't know what this is. Is this A sub 31, two? Is this A sub three, 12? What is it? So that's why you'd put a comma in between them to say, hey, this location is on the third row, 12th column. Okay, so that's when you definitely want to use a comma. All right, so to give a little example, suppose we have uppercase B and it's equal to, in our first row, we have one, negative five, nine. In our second row, we have negative seven, four, and 12. So let's say I ask you to find lowercase B sub two, three. Okay, sub two, three. So again, it's row first. So this is the row, and then this is the column, okay? So what is in the second row? So second row is down here, and what's in the third column? That's here. So it's gonna be this guy right here. So I could say this is equal to 12. 
Okay, and that's all you want to do if you get this as a question. Let's say I wanted to find B sub 1, 2. Again, the first number, which is this 1, is the row. This guy is the column, the second one. So where's row 1? That's here. It's on the top. Column 2 is here. Okay, so that's going to be negative 5. Very, very easy. Suppose I gave you something like, let me just kind of erase this one. Suppose I gave you B sub 3, 2. B sub 3, 2. What's the answer there? Well, I know that I only have one, two rows, so I can't find a third row. So they might give you this as a trick question, right? There is a second column, but there's not a third row. So this element doesn't exist. Okay, so you could just write does not exist. All right, so another thing that you might see in this section, it's pretty short and there's not a lot of questions, but they're going to talk to you about how to determine if two matrices are equal. So the rule is that two matrices are equal if and only if they have the same size, okay, so the same order. In other words, one is a three by three, the other one's a three by three. One is a three by four, the other one's a three by four. They've got to have the exact same order, or you could say have the same size. And then each corresponding element has to be the same, okay, has to be the same. So let's say, for example, we have A and it's equal to, we have two and X in the first row, Z and five in the second row, and we have B and it's equal to, we have Y and 3 in the first row and 4 and W in the second row. So we might ask, what are the values for the variables that make the matrix equation true if we said that A is equal to B? Okay. And all you'd have to do is kind of say, okay, well, I've got a 2 here and a Y here. So Y has to be equal to 2. Okay. And then you'd say, okay, I have a Z here and a 4 here. So Z has to be equal to 4. Okay. You get the idea. This is very simple. Then I have an X here and a three here. So X has to be equal to three. And then lastly, I have a W here and a five here. So W has to be equal to five because these guys are only gonna be equal. If we kind of set this up and say, okay, we have two X again was going to be three and then Z was four and we had five as W. So we have this and we'll say it's equal to this. So two, three, four, five. Okay, kind of trivial. And it seems like, you know, why would you go through this? But it is something that is important to understand. So they will give you kind of questions like this. So every corresponding element has to be the same and the order has to be the same. So you have a two in row one, column one. You have a two in row one, column one. You have a three in row one, column two. A three in row one, column two. Right, so on and so forth. You have a four here and a four here in row two, column one. And then you have a five here, five here in row two, column two. So every entry has to be exactly the same and the order has to be the same. All right, one more of these and it's a little bit more complex. So again, find the values for the variables that would make the equation. We'd say A is equal to B, make that true. So here, all we're gonna do is end up setting up an equation in each case. So we would say three X is equal to nine. And so in this case, we know that X is three. Let me kind of do this off to the side. So we know X would be three because three X equals nine. We divide both sides by three. X is equal to three. That's very easy. Let's kind of grab a few more and let me kind of just erase that. So we know we got this one done. So let me just highlight the ones that we know. And this one right here, will have W minus one and that's gonna be equal to six. So let's solve that real quick. So we have W minus one equals six, add one to each side of the equation, we get W is equal to seven. So W equals seven. And again, very easy, you just have to go through these. It's more time consuming than anything. So you have Z plus two and that's gonna be equal to 12. So Z plus two equals 12, subtract two away from each side of the equation. You're gonna find that Z is equal to 10. So we've got those done, so now we just need to do these. So I've got 19 here and I've got a 5y minus 1 there. So 5y minus 1 equals 19. And again, just add 1 to both sides. You get 5y is equal to 20. Divide both sides by 5, you get y equals 4. So we have y equals 4. And let's go back up. All right, so two more. So I've got this 15 here. And we're going to set that equal to 4k plus 3. So 4k plus 3 equals 15. 4k plus 3 equals 15. Let's subtract three away from each side of the equation. 4K is equal to 12, divide both sides by four. We get that K is equal to three, okay? So just one more now. Again, I know this is tedious, 
but it's just something that you might get asked. So it is important to cover it. So then the last one here, we have that Q minus nine is gonna be equal to 11. So Q minus nine, Q minus nine equals 11. Again, add nine to both sides. We get that Q is equal to 20, okay? So these are the values for the variables that are gonna make that equation A equals B true. You're just looking at the corresponding entries. We know that in each case I have three rows and two columns. Okay, so that's the first thing. The matrices can only be equal if and only if they're the same order. Okay, in this case, they're each a three by two. And the corresponding elements are the same. Okay, so that means that nine and three X have to be the same or equal. So we say three X equals nine, we find that X equals three, right? You do that for each one, and then you find out the values for the variables. Again, we found that X is three, Z is 10, W is seven, Y is four, K is three, and Q is 20. So that's what you do if you get this as a question on your homework or on a test.